Hey guys, I'm in Arizona. Everybody has cleared out for the morning. So I was looking through some of my comments and I figure it's time for me to address my former um, Catholicism, my former faith in Catholicism and explain some of the comments that I make about being Catholic and the distinctions between what I call being Christian and being Catholic because I understand that there are a lot of questions that uh, a Catholic would have when I say something distinguishing a Christian from a Catholic. And I know that to Catholic ears, that hurts a little because I used to be Catholic and I would never have distinguished myself from somebody who was a Christian. But there is a strong distinction, whether it's a cultural distinction that uh, believers who are Bible-based believers hold or it's just um, another way perhaps of, of what a Catholic would call being Protestant, uh, there is a distinction. It's a biblical distinction and uh, I, I would like to explain a little bit about how I came to my beliefs because I think for a Catholic to hear this is probably useful. I was raised Catholic. Um, I was Catholic uh, I was born Catholic. I was baptized Catholic. I went to Catholic school and, until I graduated from high school. And five of those years, from second grade to seventh grade, included me going to um, church every day. It was just part of our curriculum. That's what we had to do. We'd just line up in our little pews and, and have church every day. Now, the, looking back on it, what made that so amazing uh, in my life experience is that what I've learned about the lectionary statistics and how Vatican I and II um, basically have established what they call lectionary statistics. And I'll put the links in the description so you guys can go look up Father Felix's uh, analysis of lectionary statistics. But basically what he does is he goes through and he shows how the um, lectionary is broken up. Now, as Catholics probably all know, we have what is preached at, in the Missal on Sunday worship, which is different than the abbreviated, um, you know, lectionary missile stuff, uh, five days a week. Now, the benefit was that because I went to Catholic school and I had to go to church five days a week, I got to hear all the gospel and all the scriptures that are um, permitted, that are endorsed, that are sanctioned by Vatican I and II. Now, Catholic generally does not know that Vatican I and II has strictly limited the amount of verses of Scripture that a Catholic will ever hear. Even if they go to church every single day in the three-year cycle of the Missal, you will only hear about 7,000 out of 33,000 verses of Scripture. Now, there are a lot of rationalizations that the Catholic Church has for that, but I didn't know any of this. Of course, what happened to me was that I had heard all those those scriptures when I was a little kid. Uh, so I had a, a fuller understanding than a typical Catholic who only goes to church on Sunday. If you only go to church on Sunday, you only get about 2,000 verses out of the 33,000. So there's a huge difference. You actually, you actually miss out on a lot those five days a week. Now, of course, you don't really understand that or know that because you start hearing the same, you know, every three years you've heard the Missal uh, in full, but the Missal is not the full gospel, and there are a lot of verses the Catholic Church leaves out. Now, here's what happened to me. I was very faithful. I believed in Jesus Christ. I believed, I prayed to Mary. I believed in the saints. I used to even pray St. Peter's Prayer, you know, all, every day. These were prayers that I really had faith in. But as I came across, uh, one day I was studying uh, the Federal Reserve, and I came across some references um, to, uh, what's it called, to Anne Blavatsky. I think it's Helena Blavatsky's uh, writings because there's a lot of theosophical underpinnings to the th theories and the philosophy behind the Federal Reserve. Those guys were theosophists. Um, and so I was reading some of Helena Blavatsky's doing research and I came across her mentioning of the biblical prophets. And it occurred to me, I was like, wait a minute, I don't even know what the biblical prophet said. So what I did was uh, I picked up the book of Jeremiah. It's just randomly in my kitchen, right? And uh, if you Catholics have never read the book of Jeremiah, I recommend that you start there. And by 
by page 7 of the book of Jeremiah, if you guys aren't afraid of what you're reading, uh, there's something wrong with you guys because uh, the queen of heaven is the devil. And if you don't get that in the first seven pages of Jeremiah, you're, you're just not even, you're not even paying attention. And so that scared me and I kept reading and I, so I just studied. I just studied the book of Jeremiah and it, I could not understand why the, uh, why the Catholic Church would assign the title of the Queen of Heaven to Mary. I mean, God clearly hates the Queen of Heaven. It is not a title you want to ascribe to the Mother of God, right? So I went back in Jeremiah or to Isaiah, the chapter before, to see. I was like, well, maybe there's some explanation for it. Maybe there's some way that we're going to see that Mary is the Queen of Heaven and those guys were just mis misusing her name or something. And I read through the book of Isaiah. So by the time I had finished the book of Isaiah and the book of Jeremiah, I not only was I did not get any answers as to why the Catholic Church would allow for the Queen of Heaven title to be bestowed on the Mother of Jesus, but I was very clear on the fact that God continually warns the children of Israel that their priests will lead them astray. And it was a very clear and loud message. So rather than go running to a priest, I just decided I was going to go ahead and read all 12 of those prophets. And by the time I read all those, tw those 12 prophets, which isn't that much reading, you guys, it's only like, I don't know, 150 pages at the most. By the time you read through all 14 prophets, okay, you understand that there is a huge problem. You get the context for the Pharisees, you get a context for the false priests, you get a context for false doctrines, and then by the time you get to the New Testament, then you can understand what Paul is telling everybody, what Jesus is warning everybody, how Jesus distinguishes between his church and the priesthood, how the book of Hebrews elaborates that there is one mediator, you know, and that is Jesus Christ. There is no Pope. This idea that the Holy Father is a man is blasphemy. I mean, I can go on and on and on, and there are many, 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 many videos out there. Many people um, have done great analyses of this, and I may actually do it myself someday just to clarify. But from my personal experience, learning it from somebody else is is not going to be worth it. It's not, it's not ever going to be worth it. If you, you need to, like, turn to the Word of God and read what God says and let God convict you through the Holy Spirit because you can sit there and follow men all day long, but all you're going to do is jump out of one error and into another. So don't even, I mean, all I'm trying to do is give you guys, um, you know, the recommendation that rather than let's sit here and debate apologetics, which I'll be happy to do, and I can do because the Word of God is sufficient and sharper than any two-edged sword. So I can totally destroy Catholicism with the Bible, you know, and I have lots of references for it, but that's not the point. The point is that once you see what God is actually saying in context, which you're not given in full because how the Vatican won into uh, lectionary statistics have whittled down the Word of God to back up their doctrine and their dogma, um, then you get, you get to be free. Jesus says, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciple indeed, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you see, free. See, the cool thing is, is that I, don't, I didn't have to know anything about Martin Luther. I didn't have to know anything about any Protestant denomination. I didn't have to do anything. I never went to another church but a Catholic church. In fact, I stayed out of all churches for seven straight years. I wouldn't even entertain going to another church until I felt like I had known that I knew the Bible enough to figure out what kind of church I was looking for. See, a lot of people will just go from one doctrinal error into another. But as soon as I understood the depth of what the prophets were preaching and what the prophets were warning people about, I came to understand that, the, that these men will preach things that sound good to itching ears. These men will preach God and they are close to their lips but far from his hearts, from their hearts. And these men, in vain do they worship him, teaching the commandments of men for the, doc for the doctrines of men for the commandments of God. I mean, there are a lot of warnings. In fact, the entire Bible is a big condemnation of the hierarchy that we know as the magisterium. Now, I'm not asking you to take my word for it. What I'm asking you to do is consider God's word for it because you don't have to know, you know, what John Calvin said or Martin Luther or any of those Protestant dudes. You can just read the Bible yourself. There's a reason why 
the Catholic Church experienced the quote-unquote Reformation as soon as people could read that Bible in their native language. And although a lot of Protestants don't have any idea what the Bible says, that's no excuse. Today, you know, the Pope wants to say the Reformation is over. Baloney. The Reformation is not over. The Reformation is the Word of God. Now, it doesn't mean you have to join another denomination or anything. I'm just telling you guys, if you really believe in our Lord Jesus Christ, test what you've been taught in the Catechism to what the Bible says. I am absolutely sure if you do it with a contrite heart, all by yourself, without any influence of men, you will come to the same conclusions that I did. There's just no way around it. The Bible says what it says. And once you start reading it, you realize that there's a huge distinction between Catholicism and Christianity as far as what our Lord Jesus Christ laid out and what the Apostle Paul has explained to us. So I'm not trying to criticize our Catholic brothers and sisters, but I have never met, and now granted I don't know every Catholic, but I have never met a Catholic who actually sat down in humility before the Word of God without using the Catechism to just see what the Word of God says and then compare the Catechism to what the teachings of the Bible are, who didn't walk away from Catholicism. It's, uh, you know, and now I know that there are people out there that, that use catechism as their lens to view the Bible, but I'm saying use the Bible as your lens to view the catechism, and you see there's a whole slew of problems there. I mean, simply Deuteronomy 18.18 18, that says that if any man, you know, pr professes to be speaking for God, for, for God and he preaches something that is not, or that does not come to pass, or that is in conflict with the Word of God, you're supposed to leave that, that group, that, that leadership. And you guys, there are 2,000 years worth of, er well, not 2,000, there's about 1,500 years worth of errors of popes saying things that are in complete contrast to the Word of God. I mean, it's, it's vile and egregious, but you don't have to study history. You can just read the Bible to see if it gels, you know, with Catholicism. And uh, I, I really, I don't want to get into a debate about Catholicism. What I really want to do is just encourage you guys to study the entire corpus of the scriptures for yourself, alone, it, with a contrite heart before God and ask him in truth to please show you what, what he said. It took me, you guys, look, when I started reading that stuff, I started writing down notes. And my first thought was to take these things to a priest and have a priest explain them to me. But like I said, I read the entire book of Jeremiah, and by the end of the book of Jeremiah, if you're not a little bit afraid that men can lie to you, you haven't paid attention to what's laid out in Jeremiah. I mean, the entire book, there's like, I don't know, 50-something chapters there that lay out the fact that these men were speaking with lies and leading God's people to sin and teaching lies, and you know they bend their, their tongue like bow for lies repeatedly there's like 50 references in the book of Jeremiah to how men can lie you know so if you're not if you're not moved to question the authority that you've submitted to then your faith is in vain because it's it's pretty much the entire the entire purpose of the bible is is to give us a measure a righteous rod to compare all things that we believe to the word of god so that's really, that's just my thought is that, look, Catholics, I'm not trying to be insulting to you. I'm just on another side of, of the Bible. I've, I've studied this thing. It doesn't say what we, th we are told it says. It's, they teach us false things. God warns us repeatedly against the hierarchies of men. And I just highly encourage you guys to read it for yourselves. You don't have to consult any theology. Just read it. God tells us exactly what he believes and what he wants us to do and how he wants us to handle things. And there is no Catholic church in the Bible. There is no, that rock, that rock is Jesus Christ. It's the profession of faith that comes from the revelation of God directly himself. It's, it's not what we think it is. This whole idea of, you know, Matthew uh, 16, upon this rock I build my church, all that stuff we, we were lied to. We were lied to. How they exegete those passages are just wrong. And uh, a study of the scripture will greatly reveal that to you guys. So I hope this helps. And if I need to, I will go into, you know, I'll, I'll do a whole apologetic video. I just, I can't do it right now. It's going to take me some time. But what ended up happening was I started taking notes in the book of Jeremiah, like I said, and I was going to go to a priest. But 
after I realized that the priest can lie to us, I decided to keep good don't going with my notes, and then I just studied it against the catechism. And I ended up with a spreadsheet that was like 70 pages long, you guys, where I had detail of the catechism compared to the scripture. And I titled this spreadsheet, Things God Hates. And they truly are things that the Catholic Church does that God hates, like confession to men, uh, like the priesthood, you know, like I, the idols, like, I mean, geez, you guys, just the fact that the Catholics, uh, the Catholic Church teaches, um, you know, that they pray to Mary to ask her to deliver them, to, to be an intercessor between God and, and between Jesus and, and us. I mean, the stuff that they teach you guys is just wicked. The idea that, uh, you know, Jesus is the re repropitiation for our sins, you know, that, that Jesus gets re-sacrificed on the altar, that's trampling the sacrifice of Jesus um, underfoot of men. It's, there, there's just so many things wrong with the, uh, you know, with every, it's almost like every single year the Catholic Church endured, they chipped away just a little piece more from the gospel until it's, it's completely in opposition to what Jesus taught. And uh, in the meantime, it, it, my references to the spiritual battle, uh, Catholics don't know anything about the spiritual battle. That's, that's a fact, you guys. There's no way that they teach any of that stuff. You have to actually dig deep into the book of Ephesians, and you have to dig deep into you know, the, book, the letters to the Thessalonians and the book of Revelation. That, that stuff is just totally not taught in Catholicism, mostly because it exposes Catholicism for the wickedness that it is. I mean, the mysticism that they do, the fact that they believe that they're actually seeing apparitions of Mary. I mean, there are spiritual discernment tests that we're supposed to do based on the letters of John, you know, about how if they don't confess that Jesus has come in the flesh, they are not of God. And yet those apparitions of Mary are continually, like, wicked. The things that they say are completely in, in, in opposition to the gospel. They're completely in opposition to the word of God. They, they take God's glory uh, it, 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 there's just so many problems here, you guys. So I don't know, maybe I should tackle each one of them with a video. It will take me a long time, but it's, it's worth doing. If you guys need my help, I'll be happy to help you. But, you know, come out of her, my people. That church is, you know, like I said, I ended up with like a 70-page spreadsheet that just doctrinally demolishes, you know. And not only that, it demolishes, it, it definitely demolishes the doctrine. Like, for example, some of the stuff that's found in, um, you know, the, the magisterium's teaching is uh, that Allah is the same God as the Catholics believe. I mean, that ecumenicism, you guys, will bring you right to hell. I mean, not to mention the fact that the Pope said that, you know, he closed the gates of mercy last year for the church. Uh, there, there are just so many things, so many, so many errors that it's literally blasphemy before God. You know, I mean, there are, I don't even know what to say. There's just so much. So really, my, my point, back to my point. My main point, you guys, was just, look, read the Bible. Come up, do your own study. The Lord Jesus Christ, in his spirit of truth, will lead you in all truth, which is found exclusively in the scriptures. It's found exclusively in the scriptures. And ironically, you know, the Pope claims his authority in scriptures, but if you guys compare the book of Leviticus to seeing how God goes to great painstaking detail. I mean, even describing the fringes on the clothing that the, the priests were supposed to wear. And then you compare all those details to what you find in the New Testament, you guys are not going to find the priesthood of Catholicism anywhere. You are not going to find the authority of the Pope. You're not going to find any of that nonsense that the Catholic Church has built. But it's more than nonsense. It's wickedness. It's perverting the scriptures. It's whittling down the scriptures just to support the doctrinal errors that Catholicism advances. It is the biggest cult in the entire world, and I'm just warning you guys, get out of it by studying the scripture and see what God says and compare it to what the Pope says. And you really do have to choose. Ultimately, you guys have to choose which, which Holy Father you're going to believe in. You cannot believe in both. The Pope is a completely distinct and different quote-unquote Holy Father than the one Jesus prays to in Matthew 17. There's just no way around it. So I'm not trying to be mean, but you guys, seriously, your entire salvation depends on you looking through this and studying it for yourself. I hope that helps.